Good morning, folks. Big earthquake struck, the sun offered a treat for our eyes, and we've got news from around the galaxy and the universe. Let's begin over at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last 24 hours on our star were not tremendously eruptive, and apart from the dark coronal holes, the incoming bright region south on the left is stealing our gaze. The region is a considerably high latitude one, indicative of the solar cycle 25. It is indeed the most well-formed sunspot we've had in this new cycle thus far, but do we expect solar flares? No, not yet. It needs friends around it to work the umbral magnetic fields, but we'll have eyes on it for such development today. The solar wind is super quiet. Top panels, we see plasma speed descending beyond the 300 kilometers per second range. That is a good recipe for those green bars showing geomagnetic stability in the KP index on the bottom. Of course, yesterday we had a little something to say about these coronal holes and the planetary geometry of the major Saturn alignment. Here's what we said yesterday. We do have that significant coronal hole system on the south. We're awaiting its solar wind. And with the Saturn alignment ongoing, those two make for an earthquake watch. Well, Earth made us wait the majority of the day. But as the sun set on the western world, the shaking began. 7.8 is a powerful earthquake. We did actually get a brief tsunami warning for nearby coastlines. The peak wave, however, was only about a foot off the ambient ocean level. Forecasters not using a computer program would have been hard-pressed as the blood echo came just five hours earlier. It took two hours to even report to USGS feeds. We also had a noteworthy six-pointer in Oceania, taking the second-place seismic location for the day. Let's quickly go to the moon. I am just showing a bit of the video to give you an idea of what's inside. Various locations mapped in sequence over the course of a lunar day to see not only the permanently shadowed craters, but in a couple of the shots I don't show here, you can see rims of those craters at the poles that never escape the sunlight. Up next, folks, we're going to ocean worlds, except we're turning up their star's juice to a tremendous degree. It turns out that if you take an ocean world and irradiate the pants off of it, you're going to end up with a mini Neptune. The ultra cloudy picture the observations are bringing of certain exoplanets makes them think they are actually water worlds under major radiative stress. Sticking with exoplanets, one they thought they'd lost has been rediscovered. Using a new technique, this lost Saturn sized world is now again seen zipping around its star in only 35 days. This technique should be very useful for these close-in exoplanets. Up next, we're going to NRAO and the VLA, mapping the extragalactic fields around the spiral galaxy NGC 4217. These are not the fields within the disk or those closely tied to the active galactic nucleus. These are more of the larger scale fields extending into the inflows and outflows from the cosmic web, into and through the circumgalactic medium. These are one of the three core things not well accounted for in galactic dynamics, which is why they think they need so much dark matter. They do not. Last but not least, folks, hopefully the new EBOS catalog completing the Sloan Digital Sky Survey will help them out on a large scale. It's one of the most massive catalogs of objects in space, and it combines numerous types of observations that took place over the last two decades. The major cuts out of the field of view here, the black areas, which seem to separate the field into halves, is the region we can't see because of the Milky Way galaxy. Actually, the returned objects here are found north and south of the galactic plane. The hope is that this can help elucidate large-scale structure, connections between galaxies and galaxy clusters, effects of the large-scale structure in the evolution of the cosmos, and perhaps even nail down the issues remaining with the microwave background or at least recognize that they're there. The EBOS survey, including 3D and virtual reality videos for those with the capabilities to view them, are found in the link list below, along with everything else we saw today. We greatly appreciate your support. Not only do we count on your website memberships at suspiciousobservers.org to keep these free news shows coming, but we've got all our best YouTube videos on the homepage to watch for free. It's worth checking out. We've got your wind map forecast and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.